Hello and welcome to the quarterfinals of Grand Prix Boston. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Hall of Famer Randy Bueller, and we're underway. Philip Napoli versus West Havenich, and we've got an infect mirror somehow here, Randy. Now, talk to us real quick about how this deck works, what its goals are. Yeah, the goal is to get a creature with infect onto the table. Either Glistener Elf and Blighted Agent. Glistener Elf is nice because it's one drop. Blighted Agent is nice because it's unblockable. And then uh, the Ink Moth Nexus is the other option, which has flying. So Icar Claw Mirror, too? Uh, not usually. Oh, I okay. see Viridian Corruptor in Napoli's list. Oh, wow. Um, I don't see... Oh, Plague Stinger for Hovenich. Interesting. These are not, they're not, it's not a 60-card mirror. I mean, same mm -hmm. core strategy, which, you know, Glistener Elf. But so then, the point is, you get an Infect creature, and now the rest of your deck is Giant Growths. Whether it's, you know, uh, dis uh, Distortion Strike for Napoli, Might of Old Crosa, Groundswell, Vines of Vastwood, Mutagenic Growth, you know, Apostle's Blessing can defend somebody in a pinch. Uh, Pendlehaven can pump somebody up. Exalted Triggers from Noble Hierarchs can pump somebody up. But you can really win the game in one attack. I mean, those Giant Growths are all designed for thinking, oh, yeah, well, the opponent's going to be at 20, right? Oh, here's Gitaxian Probe. That's Both players run Gitaxian Probe, four for Hovenich, three for Napoli. Okay. It's nice to know what you've got to play around. Yes. Like, if you're going to go essentially all in and just point your entire handful of Giant Growths at one creature, it helps to, kn helps to know whether they have a removal spell or not. All right, so let's take a look at Phil, Na Phil Napoli's hand. He's got that Pendlehaven we just mentioned, also an Ink Moth Nexus, but he's got a Blighted Agent... Uh, that's the only Infect creature I, I see there. He's also got Might of Old Croza plus another Noble Hierarch, and then that's a Mutagenic Growth in the background. So, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty nice draw here, really. I mean, he's going to have a Blighted Agent with the backup plan here, but I, I actually don't know what's the most important thing in this, in this mirror. I mean, unblockability seems ridiculously good to me. Sure. But, I mean, is he really going to... He's not going to put Noble Hierarch in front of Glistener Elf, right? I, I, I mean, don't know. It's a know. little scary... I, th I don't think you can block here. I don't think so either. you're just getting too far behind, so he takes one poison. Ooh, Plague Stinger, Plague which Stinger. is basically uh, Havenich's impression of, a, uh, of the Blighted Agent. They're pretty similar. Yeah, I mean, he's got, surely he has Blighted Agent, too. He's got four Plague yeah, Stinger, he does have four, four Blighted, Blighted Agent. Agent. Yeah, he really he actually likes has the evasive one. He has more Infect Creatures than, than Napoli does. Mm. Yeah, Napoli plays the Blighted Agent, plays another Noble Hierarch. So now two Infect Triggers get that Blighted Agent up to three power. Did you say he has a Pendlehaven? Yes. So that's four power. And then he had Groundswell plus Mutagenic Growth. So he can t attack for ten next turn, if wow. my math is correct. Yeah, that's ten exactly. I mean, he needs a land to trigger the, gr to trigger the landfall on Groundswell. Um, but he has the Pendle Haven, so yeah, I think he can attack for 10, 10 unblockable on turn 3. Not bad, right? <laughs> Pretty amazing, and it's also lethal now. Here's He's the question, one though. Poison. Can he Will survive? he survive? Yeah, that's He the has to survive Hovenetch's <laughs> turn 3. And if in order for him to win the next turn, he cannot block. He True story. Yeah, so, wow. This is, this is a very compacted game, right? I mean, we're yeah. talking about turn um, 3. He might be able to block with, uh, if he blocks with Blighted Agent, he may be able to actually get the Nexus up to the same 10 power we added up for Blighted Agent. Oh, okay. Although, yeah, I don't know if that's... Oh, yeah, pay two life for the land. That life is completely meaningless to these guys. It's all about infect. It's all about poison counters. Now, here's Might of Old Crows on yeah. the Plague Stinger. So Play the land, trigger the landfall, so that's plus four. That's now well, five. Well, that's actually just during the main phase, that one. Oh, right. Yeah, ground swells the, lands, the landfall one. If he has that, too, then this game's going to end very quickly. That's five in the air, plus Glistener Elf. And remember, PNAPS al already has one poison counter as well. Right. So he's trying to figure out whether he, he cares about Glistener Elf. Can he get three? Like, does three... He needs to take get three more poison in. Wes does. Right. So, exactly. Phil Knapp says, well, can he do it on the Plague Stinger? Because interact with the Plague Stinger. Right. So if it's a, if a, it's a ground mutagenic swell, growth. like mutagenic growth would be five, six, seven, eight, but that's one short. Mutagenic growth is not good enough, even if Napoli takes this. I mean, yeah, his decision here is whether or not to block with Blighted Agent. If he blocks with Blighted Agent, then it's because he's planning to win with the Nexus. Yeah, this gets really interesting because remember, if West just does nothing... Yeah, oh, this is super interesting because yeah. Wes actually has his own 
Ink Moth Nexus that he could leave back to block. Yeah, you gotta just take it. Nothing. Like I don't. There's nothing that does three anyway. Mutagenic Growths do two. Ground Swells deal four. Vines of Vastwood deals four. I'm not sure there's any reason to block because the difference because Ground Swell kills you anyway. Yeah, Ground Swell kills you anyway, and Mutagenic Growth doesn't kill you either way. Except two of them kills you anyway. Like I think you just take it. I don't think that. I don't think the one poison counter from the Glistener Elf matters. Rich, what do you got going on? Nathan Jones against Stanley. What? There's but a but? There's a but. Because this is the affinity mirror. So, sure. of course, they're now in the slow and grindy turn three. Everyone uh. else is doing sensible things like Thought Seize and Inquisition of Kozilek. Makes Thank sense. Thank you, Rich. All right. So, Phil Napoli looked like he was going to block Thought with of all things a hierarch. And was just he said, looking for a tell? And he's, yeah, I think he was because then he's, he's just like, take it. Take it to the feet. He got his read and he's like, we're taking it. And that puts him up to seven. But West didn't do anything with that mana. Yep. Shouldn't matter, though. Blighted Agent, I mean, I don't know West how doesn't have any way to interact, agent, right? right? Yeah. I don't think we're missing anything. So Phil's just got to do the math. There's Pendlehaven. Yeah. Pump my Blighted Agent. Yeah, now it's two. Tap for some mana. Might have old Croza. That's five, six, seven on the board currently. What are you tapping your mana for, Wes? Vines of Vastwood? Isn't that... I thought that was only Yeah, I think that only targets your creature. Let me look it up real quick, like. Really? You can make your opponent's creatures untargetable? Is that the one time Target R &D? creature can't be the target of spells or abilities yeah, your that's opponents the control this turn. Target creature can't be the target of things your opponents control? Wow. Yeah, I think that was the one time where R&D let through that wording, and then it switched everything over to yeah. only being able to target your own creatures with those green untargetable effects. So Vines of Asswood does totally interact. The question is whether Napoli can pump it enough as a response. He goes for Mutagenic Growth. He can. He can. He goes for Mutagenic Growth. Two, four, five, six, so seven, eight. Mutagenic Growths are five. Pendlehaven is six. Four, five, six, seven. And then there's eight for the native power there. But that fizzles, and Vines of Asswood obviously wasn't kicked. So no, he's at eight. Yeah. Pendlehaven's two. I think he got it to eight. I think that the... I'm counting eight. Yeah, I'm counting eight. Now... He can blind now, but he doesn't... And the Hierarch can block Glistener Elf. Yes. So he has a pair of blockers for both of Hovenetch's creatures, and then Pendlehaven alone is enough for the Blighted Agent to win on the crackback. Wow, I didn't realize Vines of Vastwood could uh, fizzle the infect. That's awesome. Giant growths. Somebody's played this mirror before. Yeah, yeah. No, these guys knew what was up. <laughs> All right, here's Ink Moth Nexus to the skies. And ship ye old team in there. Oh, he can only block two of the three. He can only block two of the three, so a pump spell will do it. Any pump spell? Take two. Lose your Ink Moth. Or take one, I mean. So Napoli jumps up to eight poison. Wes is at eight poison. And is there anything he can do? I think he's got three noble hierarchs in his hand. So I think Napoli is. I mean, he has to fizzle this Pendlehaven with another Vines of Asswood, which he can't do. So there you go. And that's it. Game Phil one Napoli. to Phil Napoli. Wow. wow. You know, <laughs> Phil Naps looks to the skies for a minute there. Look at <laughs> <laughs> If you look at it, Hovenetch had that Vines of Vastwood. If he'd been able to kick it, he would have won the, on, the, on his turn three. Oh, wow. But, you know, he didn't have the third green mana because mm -hmm. he had that, blink, that Ink Moth Nexus. Yes. So he wasn't able to pay the kicker cost. Wow. He would have just given his own guy plus four, plus four, and won the game on his turn. So close. All compacted down to three or four turns, yeah, too. Yeah. Great stuff. Uh, pop in on our... Uh, Affinity Mirror here, yeah. Nathan Jones. He was came in first in the Swiss, 42 points. He's from Canada, playing against Alex Bertoncini. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's a whole heck of a lot going on here. And it looks like Bertoncini is chump locking with a signal pest here. What are the full art cards? Uh, those are Mem Knights. Ah, okay, I haven't seen that Mem Knight promo. Cool. Yeah. And Bertoncini has Galvanic Blast to kill an Ornithopter. More importantly, to kill the creature wearing the cranial plating. That's right. He doesn't have black black to move it, does he? He's got an opal. He's got one opal. I don't see a drum yeah, anywhere. I don't see a drum. 
Burton Cheney is, has a, a six-powered arcbound Ravager on the battlefield. This matchup can definitely get intricate. And then sometimes you can just that was lethal. kill your opponent yes. <laughs> by pointing a burn spell at their face. Yes. So Nathan Jones, up a game on Alex Burton Cheney. Hovenech studying the deck list that the players are provided with, see what's going on after sideboarding. Obviously, we didn't understand how game one of the Infect Mirror works. Only, I think we only missed one interaction. But, yeah. uh, what I just happens after that. sideboarding? <laughs> what, what do their boards look like? Napoli is on Nature's Claim, Spellskite, Dispel, Wild Defiance, Twisted Image, Hunt the Hunter. Hunt the Hunter seems like Hunt it might be Hunter. good. Hunt the Hunter. Kills Although a Glistener Elf. It kills a Glistener Elf, doesn't but kill then anything else, it does leaves it? the token behind, uh, the counter still, right? No, isn't that the I get plus two, green creature gets plus two, and yeah. fights a green creature? But that's your Glistener Elf against theirs. Sure. And it picks up the a minus counter. The minus one, minus one yeah. counter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that doesn't really work. That doesn't work. Twisted Image can kill Hierarchs. Yes. But uh, that's probably not worth bringing in. Spellskite it might make sense. It does kill Spellskite. Spellskite can steal their Giant Crust, right? Yes. Yeah, that seems really relevant. Yes, it does. Uh, and, and Twisted Image can kill Spellskite, so that's, that's important. Well, Napoli looks over and does not see Spellskite in his... Oh, he does see Spellskite in his opponent's board. His opponent has uh, Inquisition, Dismember, Abrupt Decay, Spellskite, Corruptor. So presumably they both bring in Spellskites, but Napoli has the trump with his two Twisted Images in that fight. Uh, Hovenetch has Inquisitions. Those seem really good here. Yes. I guess the Corruptors are good at killing Spellskites too? The Inquisitions are really interesting because, you know, the draws when we see the Infect deck lose are when they just don't have the Infect creature. They've got all the pieces, <laughs> but they don't have that one thing to sort of build their whole game plan around. Your point you being, what, it sideboarding away. out? Anything you sideboard out hurts? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and you bring in Inquisitions if you're sitting in Wesley's side and just peel off the one Infect creature from a, what would be a normally a great keep. You right. know, and all of a sudden, Napoli's like just desperately hoping to peel one of his infect creatures from the top of his deck. Interesting stuff. Yeah, I don't know. You definitely have to be careful with a deck like this not to uh, dilute your deck too much. Absolutely. How good is Apostle's Blessing in this matchup? It seems great. Yeah. I mean, you're not protecting your creatures from removal as much, but getting, you know, pseudo unblockability is fantastic. Phil's got one. Wesley's got four. Four? Four main deck. I don't know if you want all four here. I mean, if you're protecting from what removal... What does he not have? Wesley has... It's the four Plague Stingers that, are, that Napoli doesn't run. Andy has the four Apostles' Blessing. Phil has... I guess he has Corruptors' main. Uh, and, it, and it looks three like Wes has them all on the board. Yeah. Phil has three Corruptors where Wesley... Basically where Wesley has uh, the Plague Stingers... Oh, Distortion Strike. Phil runs Distortion Strike where Wesley has Apostle's Blessing. It's like they're getting unblockable one way or the other. Wild Defiance as well. There's one in the main deck for Phil Napoli. Card is, uh, it just makes basically makes everything you cast on your creatures a giant growth as well. Crazy. Yeah. Rich, we're in between. What do you got going on over there? Well, not an awful lot on the battlefield anywhere else, it turns out. Um, Pierre Dajon against Robin Dola, that's Rock against Rock. They have 22 cards in the graveyard between the two of them nice. and no no non-land no non permanents in play. This they would at least be why we didn't start on that match. Yeah, they at least have a couple of cards <laughs> each in hand. Meanwhile, Andrew Boswell on Rock against Mark Tobias of Germany with Blue Moon. Well, they have 19 cards in the two graveyards. <laughs> uh, they have one non-land permanent each. Is it a Blood Moon? Um, no. Mark Tobias has a Batter Skull down. Andrew Boswell uh, got down Chandra Pyroma uh, Pyromaster and then proceeded um, to sort of parlay that into a, a free scavenging ooze. So that's where we are in that one. They're both playing very grindy. All the cards are in the graveyard, basically, uh, in both the other quarterfinals. So that's where we are. That so in sense. other words, uh, Randy picked well. <laughs> <laughs> We stayed out of the meat grinder. <laughs> I mean, those are kind of fun to watch, but I, I like these. Like this, this game we had with with Wes versus Phil was was really. Yeah. Cool. Also, we probably get to watch their game three. That's right. Yeah, it's just not every day we get to watch the Infect Mirror in the top eight of a GP on camera. It's pretty awesome. Like Phil's doing the old super shuffle here. 
Don't have a lot of Pro Tour storylines left here, right? Oh, lied the affinity's already off. Burton Cheney with the turn one thought cast? Or is that turn two? That's turn two. He's got his Opal active, a couple ornithopters, a couple extra cards. It's a good start. None of the true gas, though, yet, right? He needs a cranial plating or a Ravager or a Master of Ethereum, something along those lines, to really take advantage of the fact that he's dumped five, six artifacts into play. You occasionally see the draw where they get nothing but a bunch of ornithopters. Yeah. I usually rejoice when that happens. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nathan with an opal of his own. Was that a grudge? Yeah. Ooh. He's prepared for the mirror. He targeted the opal. No colored mana for you. Interesting. Yeah, especially with that draw, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, he might have prioritized a cranial plating higher, but with none of the superstars in play, and that as his only colored mana source, it seems like a fine choice. His opal gives him the ability to flash it back, too. All right. Back to the... Back to the infect shenanigans. All right, here we go. Let's see how this game plays out. This is, of course, a post-sideboarded game, so there will be some influence from the boards, though. Looking at them, nothing really jumped out to me as, oh, you just got to have that. I think you want Spellskite. Do they have dismembers? Oh, there's some. Hovenetch does. Uh-huh, that seems pretty good in this matchup. It's just free. It's <laughs> one mana. All right, so Noble Hierarch for Wes. And what does Phil have on his turn one? He's got a Glistener Elf. That's what you want on turn one. I like that. Yeah, if you could draw, if you could play turn one Glistener Elf in every match, this deck would be a lot better. Yeah, if it had eight Glistener Elves. Oh, yeah. They make do. Uh, and here's Inquisition of Kozilek on turn two from West. So Looks like he, he boards those in. Yeah, it might have been too late, though. I, you know, you really want to hit that Glistener Elf. Like, let's take a look at what else he's got going on. You think and he should have led Inquisition instead of I think of so. Like, Hierarch? I think you just have to take away their Infect Creature. Look at his hand now. Might have Volcroza, might have Volcroza, land, land, mutagenic growth. And yes, he does have another Infect Creature, but it's, not mi it's miles away. It's not till turn three. This is, this is what you want to see when you Inquisition them, except for you want to do it on turn one and take away that early creature. Now he's going to have to deal with that Glistener Elf in a pretty big way. And he's got to be super careful here, too. Yes. I mean, Phil's got lethal. Yes. Easily. <laughs> he's West got turn two lethal. Yeah, he cannot leave the door open. Yes, he has a turn two lethal draw here. Play a land, Might of Volcrosa, Might of Volcrosa, Mutagenic Growth, you're dead. One of those is going to go down to, inqu to the Inquisition here. but Yeah, or he could, it, depending but on I, I what But I do think that got. Noble Hierarch's feeling a little nervous. <laughs> Noble Hierarch is looking over there going, uh-oh. Uh, I'm here this for work, isn't good boss. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting for duty. <laughs> <laughs> and boss is like, go stand over there. <laughs> <laughs> Noble Hierarch is like, why did you play me instead of the turn one Inquisition? <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what he's got to follow up with. Now, he can take this opportunity if he, if he has a dismember to fire it off here. Wow. He's attacking. Bold. I'm, ass I'm assuming he has it. I mean, well, with the Might of in the in the graveyard, it's no longer a lethal draw. There it oh, is. But the, and there's the dismember anyway. Yeah, that's how you do it, too, against this deck. You do not let them untap, and especially right. don't let them draw a, land, or draw a card, because they'll find that Vines of Vastwood every time. Yep. Rangers, Guile, you name it, they've got it. All right, well, leading with, if he's got Dismember, then leading with the High Rock seems way better than the Inquisition. Totally. Yeah. He even mized the damage there, didn't he? Yeah, for whatever that's worth. I like that. <laughs> and Napoli has to pass the turn back. So Napoli's one turn away now from getting a second Infect creature yeah. on the battlefield with the Viridian Corruptor. But in the meantime... In the meantime... Pendlehaven plus Noble Hierarch... On the yeah. Ink Moth is, is Nexus hits for three. threatening three, four, oh, five, no. six, How about seven. seven. I mean, Phil has one unknown card for, for Wes. Right. And oh. that's going to be lethal. Wow. Four, eight, nine, ten. 
Wow. He gives him this sort of half handshake because he realizes, oh, oh wait, I still got game one. three. Yeah, we got a game three. Oh, he lost. Oh, wait, I won the first one, didn't I? Yeah. It was a good draw, though. That was a, that was a hell of a draw. That was insane. That was a turn three kill, and he both dismembered an Inquisition. Yes, he did. <laughs> I'm going to take a card out of your hand. Yep. I'm going to kill your poison creature. I'm still going to kill you with a third I kill turn. you on turn three. Wow. Oh, incredible stuff. That was worth that was worth the high five. The and by the way, Phil had a turn two kill draw. Yeah, it's like, unmolested. I mean, <laughs> those were two incredible draws for both opponents. But Scary Wes deck. is a slightly better. Make sure you join us next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Pro Tour Magic 2015. We're going to be coming from Portland, Oregon. We're going to be watching Standard M15 Draft in the hand of the top Magic players in the world. It is going to be one heck of an event that also is a culmination of an entire season of Magic that lasted over a year. And this is going to set the stage for the next coming year with who's platinum, who's gold, who made it to silver. On the side tables, what's going on over there? Really interesting choice that turned out not to be interesting. <laughs> Pierre Dajon has down Liliana of the Vale and Garrick. He's clearly ahead. Robin Dola has two cards in hand. He's at 12 life. They're both dark confident. He thinks for ages, do I play one? Do I wait? Do I play both and hope? He eventually decides, yeah, I'm going to play both and start looking at the top of my deck. He never gets to look at the top of his deck. End of turn, dark blast one, dredge back, oh. dark blast the other. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Dajon wins 1-0. Wow. Meanwhile, a... Uh, uh, Mark Tobias is still kind of stable against Andrew Boswell, in large part because Boswell's very large Tarmogoyf isn't on his side of the table <laughs> because Vidalcan Shackles has that for Mark Tobias. That's a lot of islands. There's a lot of islands going on because that's still game one, don't forget. So they're still going at it, but Dajon leads Dola 1-0. to zero. Thank you, Rich. Are we going to game three on the Affinity Mirror? No live looking. The double shuffle With looking? the shuffle cam. <laughs> <laughs> no. We do not want to see the double shuffle, Rashad. Picture in picture shuffling? Yeah. All the new tech here at the Grand Prix. So Phil Napoli still with a smile on his face here, even though he got kind of beat up there. A few more rounds before we get to crown our champion here in Boston. Fantastic turnout for this tournament oh for yeah. those of you just tuning in on the weekend. We had uh, over 2,400 players. We think it's about the fourth biggest, uh, well, the fourth biggest Magic tournament ever. North American. Haven't there North been big Amer ones overseas? Uh, you know, there have been, but they've been in this range. Yeah, yeah. There's... There have only been two that have gone over the 3,000 mark, and those are both over four. Yes. If I lose track of like 2,500-ish. Yeah. But we're in that, that next tier, which is, you know, not a lot of them. Yeah, but I mean, size. I would believe that there have been both Japanese and European GPs bigger than Fair. this. Yeah, that's a good point. That's true. But huge, right? Huge. 2,400 sure. plus players all playing modern. Yeah, I mean, there have been, what, 150, 200 Grand Prix in the history of the game? We're in the top five-ish? I think I did 150 of them this year already, but... <laughs> well... <laughs> you and Shuhei. Yeah. Did you see that stat from Paul Jordan? No. He was putting stats together for the Pro Tour. Uh-huh. Uh, Shuhei Nakamura has played in 40% of all the Grand Prix that have ever happened. Wow. <laughs> that's incredible. He's played in like 150 of them. Some oh, that's ridiculous unbelievable. <laughs> what a great stat. PJ brings the, <laughs> brings the knowledge. Yeah, that yeah. is a great, great set, little data bite. Wow. Lots of fireworks here on uh, Alex Bertoncini versus Nathan Jones in the Affinity Mirror. Of course, both decks off to a quick start, as the deck tends to do. Nathan had won the first game, right? Bertoncini mm -hmm. was playing second when we looked in. Yeah. So that ancient grudge, Bertoncini survived it and won anyway. Yes, he did. Yeah, Nathan, remember, he finished off with that uh, Galvanic Blast in the yeah, first yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does Rich know how game two ended here? You got something else for us? Uh, I have Germany leads 1 0. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> um, uh, Mark Tobias over eight. Andrew Boswell. 8 0. Hmm? Hmm? 
eight nil. Germany leads eight nil. Germany that leads. That was the semifinals. I yeah. was so mad when they gave up that goal. Anyway, anyway, go on. <laughs> <laughs> moving swiftly past that, uh, Tobias uh, added salt to the wounds, having stolen uh, the large Tarmogoyf with Vidal and shackles. He then equips his own batter skull to it. Oh, jeez. And then uh, kills Boswell with that it. That is so, salt uh, in the wound. Goodness yeah. sake. So uh, that's 1-0 to Mark Tobias. Uh, and obviously you're heading for game three uh, in the other matches that you're live mm. looking and so on. Cranial plating on the uh, Vault Scourge. Some nice life gain. What is it? Four? Five? I think those are both, both Citadels. Citadels. Yeah, yeah, so five. Six power. Six, yep. six power life link attacker connects not too bad i thought james jones was going to win that game too mm -hmm. he had to gr grudge the opal i guess the thoughts he's he had uh phil burton cheney would And of course, those are both artifacts adding to it. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Woo! Eight power swinging in with lifelink. We don't have life totals um, on well, our one live more looking graphic, be but yeah, that was I mean, 14 that he did over the last two turns, or maybe even 15. It's going to be really hard. It's hard to imagine Nathan winning this turn. It seems like what he needs is an answer to that flying cranial plating. I don't think he has it. Yeah, meanwhile, you can see Napoli playing turn one fetch land for a Hierarch. Yeah. Pretty curious to see the... We can kind of see both of them, though, right? Can kind of see both of them. I mean, Nathan Jones is up against it. I mean, this looks like a pretty clear yeah, cut scenario. Yeah, there's the handshake. And that's it. Burton handshake. Burton Sheeny through to the semis. All right, let's head back to our main feature match. We don't want to miss it. The game could be over by the time we get <laughs> back. It's a noble Hierarch for Phil Napoli on turn one. Perfectly reasonable start. And what does Wes have for his first turn of the game? A fetch land. That's, that's I a I bet start he's going to pay well. two life and not care. <laughs> <laughs> it must be so liberating. I <laughs> never have to care about that. And all right, <laughs> mirror and indeed. They fetched out different lands, though, so <laughs> mm -hmm. totally different draws. Yes. And let's see what Phil Napoli has for the second Maw, turn. Blighted Agent. So he's got a Blighted Agent now that he potentially could protect with the uh, Noble Hierarch, depending on what cards he has in his hand. And then, of course, the Ink Moth Nexus will loom in the background there until it becomes relevant. <laughs> All right, the mirror continues oh. here. Hoven Edge with that, that green mana could be a Dismember, could be a uh, Vines of Vastwood. Lighted Agent not blockable, but can be targeted. God, this must be the most nerve-wracking mirror, too. Like, look what happened to Phil Napoli in the last game. Like, right. Put himself in a fine position and was like, oh, I guess I'm dead. Yeah, Pendlehaven. He's thinking about targeting the agent, but he wants to make sure that he's ready for what's going to happen if Vines of Asswood comes flying down. Mm. That's I, that's, I think, what that pump fake was. I think you're right. I, last I time I he led off with the Pendlehaven. Right. And it got to resolve. Yeah. And, and then Vines happened as a response to a Might of Old Crosa. Right, because so, Wes was like, okay, fine. It's this weird permissioning element. He's like, is it yeah. okay if I Pendlehaven my guy? And Wes <laughs> says, sure, two power. And make it three thanks to the uh, Noble Hierarch settles here. Settles for the three poison. Yeah, that's pretty good. And is he just going to ship the turn back? Yeah, he is. So he's going to leave back... A blocker on the ground that can't do anything, and a flyer in the air that currently can't do anything. But he's got mana up. Yep. Might have old Croza. All right, is West going for it right here? This, of course, is and during again, the main it's phase. It's this weird permission battle. I, is this going to be a they Vines of Vastwood? They both have a counter spell in their deck. Yes, he's got Vines of Vastwood. Now, the question is... What yeah. else does Wes have in yeah. his hand? In theory, as a response, he could cast a bunch of giant growth effects. In theory. I think he... He played a land, I so... I think he's got maybe, like, another Might of Old Croza and a pair of Plague Stingers, possibly. 
I can't okay, quite Okay, so this is Might of Old Crosa as an instant, right? What is the exact wording of Might of Old Crosa? No, it's if you as cast long it as it's your main, main phase, phase. It counts? Yeah, so it still counts as plus four, plus four here, even in response to Vines of Vastwood. So that gets it to five. Yes. You don't blow another Vines of Vastwood, do you? Is this I, I don't know. Is this West trying to bait out a second Vines? He could get in for six potentially here, or four, five. Yeah, that's a. S if it resolves, that would be six, counting the exalted counting trigger. Counting the exalted trigger. So if he has like two mutagenic growths or a ground. Yeah, but swell. so you let this resolve, right? And don't you. If you have another Vines, if, obviously you should think about it here whether you have it or not, because you want to represent it. Yes. Um, but if he does have another Vines, I would respond to the next one. Yeah the mutagenic growth or the whatever is going to happen next. Yeah, I think he just takes six if he doesn't have anything else. Yep. So, note, if it wasn't for Vines of Asswood, Phil's dead. Right. Right, that was ten power. Wes had a turn three kill. Yes. Now he's got two Plague but Stingers in his hand, but he doesn't play one. Yeah, it leaves his mana untapped. Mm -hmm. Well, if he taps out for Plague Stinger, it's really easy for, for Phil to just giant growth it up. The question is, is Phil going for it? Also, does he have the tools? Taps two. Plays Spellskite. Spellskite. Wow, okay. That's going to change things. That's going to effectively blank any future pump spells. Also blanks West. the Vines of Asswood. Yes. Of course, it does take a card slot, meaning it's not a pump spell itself, so it makes and it, it less likely mana. Yeah, for, for Phil to, uh, to have what he needs to finish Wes off this turn. But it is going to make his yep. life a lot easier. Yeah, Wes with two Plague Stingers in hand doesn't have a lot going on here. But he doesn't need much either. A Groundswell or a Might of Volcroza is not One, enough. Two, three. Take three. Now, again, Vines of Vastwood would have been enough to be lethal here if Phil hadn't had to use it yes. to stay alive. Absolutely. All right, another land here for Phil as well. And pass the turn back. So both players sitting at Still six down to poison. One card. Yeah. And what was it? Is it a land? For Wes? Yes, it was an ink moth yeah. next. He can get half of it. Here's two poison. Unblockable. Phil actually needs a needs a pump spell. Right? He can only attack for three poison next yes. turn. And he'll die to the crackback yes, too. He will. And here's a plague stinger now for Wes. Sure. So it's as pump well spell or no. Moth. If, yes. if Phil Napoli can pump his Blighted Agent, one point he is all he needs. He needs to get one in. He, it, it can be a Noble Hierarch. Yeah, Exalted will do it. <laughs> this is a big oh, draw the for slow Phil. Roll. He's not even He's looking at it. He's getting the sweat, not only for us, but also for oh, him. Geez. Moves his pen out of the way and now takes a look at it. Was he deciding if he wanted to crack that fetch beforehand? Oh, maybe. Now, he's cracking it now. Yeah, I mean, he turns on Landfall for... right. But it shouldn't matter. It like shouldn't anything matter. is good enough. I don't, unless we're. Oh, is oh. this it? It yes, is. It's groundswell. groundswell. That's There's that's gonna hand. do it. Phil Napoli peels and gets there. Wow. Pnaps moves on to the semifinals. That was off the top, right? It had to be. What is just I cast think it last it turn? It was. Yeah, I think it was just for sure off the top. That was insane. Wow. Wow. Phil Napoli. Through to the semis. He'll be playing against the winner of uh, Pierre Dejon and Robin Dolar. Meanwhile, Alex Bertoncini will be playing against the winner of Andrew Boswell and Mark Tobias. Now, just a quick question here. Like, what does Blue Moon look like against Affinity? Doesn't seem very good. It seems a little sketchy, right? Yeah, I mean, they're kind of slow. The, the, the Blood Moons are... I mean, they they're turn okay. off the manlands. They yeah. turn off the manlands. They turn them, they're no longer artifacts, I believe. I think. They're just straight up I basic. I think they're just islands. basic mountains. Or mountains, yeah. Yeah, I don't think they're artifact lands anymore. I don't think. Now, Not junk positive. against affinity, though, that's a lot worse, right, for the affinity player? Yeah, well, in particular, the junk version of the rock deck. Yeah, they've got Lingering But that's Souls. not junk. Um, 
Rashad? Oh, that's the Jund Andrew one, Boswell yeah. is on Jund, not Junk. Right. Which is worse in the Affinity matchup. Yes. Right? I mean, Lightning Bolt, super good. Olivia Valderin, super good. But they're not as good as Lingering Souls against Affinity. No, it's not. Yeah, he's got more power, but less time to use it, so... Are we stuck with two two table two games in progress on the back table? One of them is being moved right now. Awesome. Ah, fantastic. Yeah, last I heard, Dejan was up a game and Tobiash was up a game. So yeah, here's uh, what game two of Tobiash and Boswell. They're not Looks on like infect it. decks, of course. Tobiash is on Blue Moon. Boswell is on Red Rock. Red Jones Rock. Rock. I like Red Rock. That's well, we went White Rock was the uh, yeah. the rock version with the Lingering Soul Splash. I mean, most people just call it Jund, but right. I like Red Rock. I like Tarmogoyf. I like Goyf on yeah, turn two. Especially like when you thought seized away the Vidalcan Jackals. The Vidalcan Jackals, yeah. That's the story that graveyard tells. Absolutely. All right, Tarmogoyf <laughs> looks a little less good now. He's going to start picking away at graveyards. Tobiash with the Blue Moon deck on the left is the one who's up a game here. This is game two. Yeah, that is one thing that you'll see is that the, the mana base from the Jund deck is pretty fragile, ultimately. They've got Manlance they rely on to finish the game sometimes, and on top of it, they're just a straight three-color deck. Oh, wow. Huh. Sword of Feast and Famine. That's threatening. <laughs> Even on a Tarmogoyf that's a zero one, that thing can do work. Yeah. He's on the slow route with his relic. Mage. He's trying to pick, go one card at a time. Didn't yeah, pop. He, he's going to start picking apart his graveyard because he gets to choose and he can take out, like he took out an artifact there right. to shrink the Goyf by a full point. Yeah, uh, choosing either the land or the sorcery doesn't shrink it, though. No. So he's two away from that. Well, the, Goyf, the Goyf is just two, three, right? Three lands and two sorceries? Right. But looks like it's going to be four power pretty soon from that sword if Mark doesn't find something to do about it. Andrew has been careful to fetch out two basic lands here, the yep. force and the swamp. And Mark is going to get a basic land of his own except for... A mountain. a mountain. What would you cast with that mountain? I don't know. No idea. I can't think of anything. <laughs> did you have Blue Moon no. and Infect and Infect in no. your top eight? when nope. you did not. I mean, the Rock decks make sense. They've been having a good weekend. If two Affinity, maybe it's perfectly reasonable. Not a pod deck to be found. No, I'm shocked you know, you know where You know where the pod decks were, by the way? 10th and 11th. 10th and 11th, yeah. 10th and 11th. Nathan Holiday, Jacob Wilson, two great pod players just... And, and did I think not it's worth have noting. the day two tiebreaker. Yeah, they needed. I mean that's the thing is that th those decks were the same records as a lot of the decks yeah. we have in the top eight. It's not like they missed four you know, of on the a eight record. players on thirteen and two yeah. got into the top eight, and four of them are on the sideline bemoaning their tiebreakers. Right. And with the tiebreaker reset, the tiebreakers they feel awfully random. Yes. Especially to Nathan Holiday, who went nine zero day one. Normally tiebreakers reward you for that, not when they reset. And Jacob Wilson, who has gone 13 and 2 at consecutive Grand Prix without getting a top eight out of it. V beats. Yeah. That is brutal. Serum Vision's scry is being resolved here, both to the bottom, says Mark. Rich, what's going on on our side table? So uh, this bit update begins with Pierre Dajon and Robin Dolar both having a 4-5 Tarmogoyf in play. Then Dajon makes a second one, so he now leads 2-1 to one in the Tarmogoyf stakes. Then it's 1-1 one, one because a 4-5 Tarmogoyf get, can get dismembered. And can also get abrupt decayed, and that's what Dolar does to the other one. So now wow. Dolar leads one Tarmogoyf to none. And then he casts Fulminator Mage and removes the only colored source from Dajon's side of the Oof. board, leaving him two tectonic edges. Oh, and God. that was all she wrote. So it's 1-1. One, one. They're moving on to the Phil Napoli table. So they're now going to be under the cameras cool. for their game three. So when this is finished, more magic coming Bravo, your way. Bravo, Rich. That's fantastic. Thank you. Could watch a game three instead of a game two. We get everybody on camera. 
I want to watch their game three, yeah. Yeah, let's watch their game three when they're, whenever they're ready, obviously. Yeah, we'll switch over to their game three once they get started. So, the Thrunfather has shown up. Not the second to last troll, the very last troll. And he's <laughs> ready to pick up that sword and fight whenever Andrew wants to go for it. He's and there it is. Wow. Do we have anything to say about yeah, that? Yeah, remember Mark? when this game was about that Tarmogoyf and the relic? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was we've left that part of the game behind, I think. We have indeed. What does he do about Thrun? He can't I shackles have no it, idea. even you if he had a shackles. Yeah. Can't wow. Like red can't target it. He can blow up the sword, but Thrun just on his own is a big enough problem. Yeah. With the sword, forget about it. I, I don't know what he does. Let's see if he's got something here. Cryptic bounce the sword. Here's a cryptic. It is cryptic. I mean, he's either tapping all the creatures or bouncing the sword. I think I would bounce counter. No, he's going to tap. How much permission does he actually have? Can he, like, bounce the sword and then counter it on the way back down? That is one of the ways that, that you can get out of That still doesn't answer the like thrun, this. though. It only answers the sword. That's right. And scavenging news now from Andrew Boswell as well. So, you know. Boswell wants to go to game three. Yeah, I mean, Mark Tobias, he's supposed to be disrupting Andrew's plan and his mana and all that stuff, and none of that's happening. <laughs> Mark is just kind of very contently playing Tarmogoyf, sword into Thrun, and now, yeah, sure, I got a scavenging it's news It's a smart too. addition for Boswell. Can't be countered, can't be targeted by them. Yeah. Thrun is, Thrun is a gigantic pain in the ass for a deck yeah, like Blue he, Moon. Yeah, he just needs to find the two green sources to cast it every game, and sure. he's done that here. Oh, yeah, sure. You're still playing this Relic Tarmogoyf game, aren't you? Uh, he's got to keep an eye on it, but it is not the most important thing, that's for sure. Yeah, that Thrun is from the sideboard. One Thrun in the board, not in the main. So, the last troll. The last troll, absolutely. Right. Uh, Batter Skull's not you know, nothing. It's not nothing, but it's still not that Feels great. outclassed. It does. 6-6 six, six sword-wielding Thrun the last troll. It'll help stem the bleeding, but I, I just, I mean, we're, we're thinking long-term here, right, Randy? And yeah. you know what? It actually won't anyway, because that germ is black. <laughs> <laughs> it can't block anyway. It can attack back and, and gain him back some of the life, but this is ugly. That, that Thrun just, I, I can't imagine how Mark is going to get out of this outside of bounce and counter, and I, that's a pretty tall ask here, and plus... We also have to remember that Thrun's going to close out this game fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah. I don't think scavenging news has a huge effect on Mark's game plan. It can mess with Snapcaster Mage. Uh oh, what is this? Olivia now? No, <laughs> Chandra, Chandra Pyromaster. This is turning into a bit of a bloodbath yeah, here. Yeah, no blocking for your germ token, right? That's now, right. Now Tarmogoyf and Scavenging Goose get through. That's right. And of course, he taps his land pre-combat because he's expecting to connect with the sword and get to untap them. Got anything to do with that land? May as well eat something. All right, in come the clowns. Clowns? Yes. You wouldn't say that to their face. Not to throw in the last troll, no. Especially not with that sword in his hand, goodness. <laughs> I'm not sure how big Tarmogoyf is here. Well, Mark seems to have fallen to two. But he's down to two. <laughs> and did he not connect? not trigger? What happened there? I don't know. Because he's supposed to untap his is land. Is it not Feast and Famine? I thought you said it was Feast and Famine. I guess it could have been Light and Shadow. Maybe I miss Saw. It's hidden now. <laughs> Which one's in his list? Light and Shadow. It's okay, Light and Shadow. Okay, so he jumped back up to yeah, 16 Yeah, not here. Feast and Famine. Yeah, yeah. Light and Shadow. 
All right, well, still protection from black and still plus two. Sorry about that. I thought it was the other one. All right, attack with the batter skull germ. Gain some life. Six is not good enough, though. No, he's just dead if he doesn't do anything here. Thrun on his own can get in there. All right, there's a Snapcaster Mage in hand now for Mark, though. <coughs> if he has another mana, he can flash back the uh, Cryptic Command. Can we picture and picture the two matches? I'd like to keep an eye on this game. Yeah, I kind of want to make sure I, this... But I also want to watch the game three. Yeah, there we get the rock mirror started in the lower right. Thought Seize takes out, or no, something takes out Dark Confidant. Yeah, it looks like that Cryptic Command is getting flashed back to tap down the squad here and draw a card. <coughs> It's a new cryptic. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. Brand new cryptic. Yeah, he didn't have the six land to snapcaster it. Okay. And there's Fulminator Mage. Interesting. Maybe he has the six land now, but Fulminator Mage can mess that up. I guess he figures he can cast that even if Blood Moon's out. Andrew Boswell on the right of the big screen, trying to force game three. Thrun wearing a sort of light and shadow. Seems like it ought to be good enough, but uh, Mark Tobiash is putting up a decent fight here. He's gone through the cryptic command to tap them, cryptic command to tap them, take one hit. Wow. Electrolyze, Fulminator Mage? That's not going to be a great result. Yeah, for no, him. that's going to get fizzled. Which means he's not going to get the card. I guess he oh he wanted to clear a path to make sure he got through with uh, lifelink. That's right, because otherwise if Fulminator Mage was going to block and sack, and uh, there would have been nothing for the germ token to deal damage to. There would have been no life for uh, Tobias. So the Batter Skull takes down Chandra Pyromaster, but he's still got this Thrun with a sword to deal with. Yeah. Oh. And is this scavenging ooze is just eating the cryptic command. There is a snapcaster in Tobayash's hand, but Yeah, he's another mana away now. That's two mana right. he needs to do that anyway, so he's probably not too bummed about it, but this is just getting ugly. Is it time for him to crack that relic and just uh, go for it? Apparently not. You know, draw a card at some point here. He's using it to manage his opponent's graveyard, yeah, but his opponent's not super turn. graveyard dependent here. That kind of sucked into this game. I wonder what the Dajan and Dolar. I can't stop staring at Thrun the last troll. No, that me neither. Sword. He's been in play for an awfully long time. Yeah, Don't he expect has. a sword wielding Thrun to be in play for this many turns. No, he usually finishes the job. The Liliana dueling with Dark Confidant in the on the other game. I think Liliana killed a Tarmogoyf and then Dark Confidant was the follow up play. Alright. Thrun. Just Thrun. Protection from Black Thrun. Six six Thrun. And Vendillion click. Eh. That is a blocker. Targets Boswell. Sees Tarmogoyf and 
something. Is it another Fulminator Mage? Can't tell. I think that's what it is. Neither of these super relevant, I suppose. I mean, you can leave them. If yeah, it was a fulminator, was a fulminator mage. mage. Yeah, and he's going to push it down to the bottom and give uh, Boswell a fresh card here. Of course, he still gets to keep that Tarmogoyf in his hand. Meanwhile, Thrun Run. is still on the beatdown path, and can Tobias take it? Yeah, he did. So he gains three life. He's not going to get to get a creature back here. Yeah, no, the relic is seen to that. He oh, found a batter skull. Batter skull. Ah. Not too shabby. Surely this is enough, right? This Tobias has, to, has to fold at some point. He has to just fall over and die. He has to at some point. He is proven unwilling to do so. Relic. Is it desperation sack draw card time from the Relic? I mean, the attack, he took six there, right? Down yes. to three, if I'm not mistaken. I guess Batterskull can get him back up to seven. But Thrun can pick up a Batterskull. Yeah, Tobias down to three life. Boswell's I guess then, but he, he's 19. got the Vendillion click he can jump with. He does. So he can buy himself a turn that way. Crazy. Now it's dueling Liliana's over in the Dolar Dajan match. I think one of them has a four on it and the other one has a one on it. I believe that's true as well. If we used our even super special cool coverage dice, <laughs> that would be even easier to see. Okay, Batter Skull attacks, Batter Skull blocks. Both players lose their germ tokens and gain four life. This seems better for Boswell. Yeah, Tobias goes up to seven, but now that turns on all the other creatures that Boswell has. Now what, put Batter Skull on Vendillion click? So we have the life at 7 to 23 here. There's shackles. shackles. What does that do? Three islands? That's a sulfur falls in the middle, right? Yeah. So that three islands. Yeah, I mean, it grabs blockers. Yes. It grabs potentially scavenging ooze. It grabs potentially tarmogoyf. I believe those are both small enough to grab, I think. Batter Skull onto Thrun. He has not left up any regeneration mana, but that shouldn't matter here. Yeah, it shouldn't matter. It's a 9-9. Nine nine. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to get blocked by a Tarmogoyf or a Scavenging Ooze. Absolutely. Got to take the Ooze here, right? Um, I mean, if the Tarmogoyf is small enough, don't you take Tarmogoyf? Uh. I mean, yeah. Ooze is just a, you'd rather have that dead, right? I guess that's true. Okay, well, Tarmogoyf is heading into the red zone. Goyf gets to get in here, though. Wow, this has been an incredible game. Yeah. You know, we, we were mentioning how tough Thrun is, and it has not been dealt with. Like, Thrun is no. still there and isn't going anywhere, but at the same time, Tobias has managed to maneuver his way into a spot where he's at least fighting on some axes here. He's still using that relic every turn to keep the Tarmogoyf at bay. 
Tobias is down to four. He's got enough mana to go for an equip. Yeah, but, but can he? It's equip or shackles. It's yeah, and if he equips, he can only hit for seven. Tarmogoyf is three. Land instant. Is it a two? I think it's a three. There might be a sorcery in there too. Yeah. All right. Tarmogoyf comes over to the wrong side of the table, just but throw the Tarmogoyf in front of it, right? Yeah, Boswell's like, sure, I'm I'll just chew through all of my creatures and then your creatures and then you. Remember Boswell's got huge life total here. He's gonna block with the the click? That's kinda interesting. Not I mean, the Tarmogoyf? You gotta figure he's gonna Oh, he's got another Vendillion click. Oh, cute. Does this prevent the life gain? It does. It does. He, the legendary roll, he chooses to keep the one that's not blocking, which means there's nothing for Thrun to deal damage that to. That is sweet. Which means he uh, misses out on a turn of the Batter Skull life li lifelink. Now, I couldn't see all of the cards there no, in the Boswell's he hand. Turned, he chose to take nothing, right? But he took nothing. So there's nothing super relevant there. Now what does Tobias do? Attack. Uh, not attack. What is he doing? Meanwhile, <laughs> Dolar and Doj Dajen still no non-land permanents. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty tough to stick one of those in that mirror. Here's three mana, four mana, five mana. Are we going for an equip here? Is he thinking about equipping Batter Skull to the Tarmogoyf? Yes. He is. Man, that's where Abrupt Decay is just nasty. But oh. uh, he saw his hand, so. He knows exactly what uh, Boswell has, so he knows he can get away with this. So I think it's seven. Seven power Tarmogoyf is going to get blocked by Thrun and die. Sure. But gain some life. And gain some life. And pass a turn back. He's just got the single red mana up. He does have a Vendillion click looming. That can block Thrun. But Thrun's also not lethal at this moment. Right. Ooh. Oh, Liliana's pretty good. That changes you tick things. You take down. Kill the click. Relic does eat the Tarmogoyf, but uh, Thrun can come through this turn. Yeah, Thrun gets to get in there. Now threatening to be lethal again next turn. Surely Tobias falls over now. Yeah, I think he's at two now. He's definitely at less than one Thrun hit. Or maybe even one. Four, eight, nine, ten. I think he's at one. And Boswell's at like 40 ish? Yes. What a crazy game. What, a, what an insane Looks game. Looks like we'll get a game three, though. All right, he is at two. Wow, just so close. I said that before, though. That whole looks like we'll get a game three. Yeah. <laughs> Boswell's at 56. 56. Which sorry. in my book is the same thing as 40 ish, by eh, the way. I mean, fair. we're splitting hairs. He's <laughs> over 40 life. <laughs> Oh, uh, Liliana goes down to Abrupt Decay. Yeah, make sure Imagine there's no... That. When we get to that match, I don't want any non-land permanence. I, I want that room cleaned up by the time I get home. All right, here's a Snapcaster Mage for a Serum Or Serum Visions. Visions. Yeah. Dolar's been playing land destruction down there in the lower right. Used a Tech Edge earlier. Now here's a Fulminator Mage. Oh, he's all about the fun. All right, Tobias passes the turn back. He's up a game here, and he is trying to survive Thrun. He's got two lightning bolts in his hand. Well, Liliana ticks up. And one of those lightning bolts gets used immediately on Dark Confidant. And here's <laughs> Repel <laughs> to get back the Snapcaster Mage, prevent the life gain. This is insane. Draw a card and... Potentially Can he line up that same this, many hits? this is insane that he's still alive. Liliana's sitting back there. 
It's a 1010 life linking pro black and white thrun. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning bolt to finish off Liliana. I, it, but the, again, though, we, we keep coming back to this, but that thrun is not going away. Like, what's the no. long game? What's the. I don't know. Like, he's doing a great job of not dying. Yes. But what what does the long game look like? I he, don't know. he knows. Like, he's does building he? towards something. He's not just, like, trying to have more camera time? It is possible. Snapcaster. Hmm, maybe, maybe the repeal? What do you think? Yeah. How about let's, we repeal? Let's do it again. And he is chewing through his deck quite nicely here. Crazy. Now, Boswell has a basic forest, so he's going to be able to regenerate Thrun even through, like, a Blood Moon or something to that effect. So that's not going to... He can't do something where he, like, quadruple blocks Thrun with no regeneration, man. That's not an option. This is just ridiculous. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Tobias was very I mean, helpful. Fulmin Fulminator, may, it's going to get stolen by Vidalcan Shackles, but... Uh, Boswell wants to force Tobayash to spend two mana on the Vidalcan Shackles. Because otherwise, the Fulminator Mage is lethal. Yep, he right, goes fine, for yeah. it. Now, that was sure. make you spend two mana, then kill your land. Fulminator. That relic has still not been cracked. Fulminator Mage is successfully attacking for damage in the other match, by the way. Dolar is pressuring Dajan with it right now. All right, we're still a Snapcaster Mage, so we're not. it's not going to end this turn. Jeez. Oh, a Cryptic Command, which can get Snapcastered next turn. Yep. So the big question here, though, is what is he building to? I don't know. Does he have grudges? I mean, so like, Boswell's on 56. It's not like... That's an issue. <laughs> Does he have some type of artifact destruction? And he continues to just wheel through draw. his deck. Yep. I saw a blood moon in his hand. Ooh, there's a treetop village. Let's get stolen by shackles. Yes. And another snapcaster off the top here for Tobias. <laughs> I feel like eventually he gets decked. I don't know how he wins. Like, unless he has something that we're unaware of. He's, pl it, it just, he's like playing in such a way that makes me think that he's looking for something. Yeah, I agree. Meanwhile, scavenging news ran into a Maelstrom Pulse in the lower right. I just I can't look away from this match. I can't either. I I, I want to know what the answer is here. Well, serum visions to start. More and searching. Second batter skull here for is, Tobias. Is that good? That still doesn't get it done though. No. Protection from black means that the germ tokens can't block. Oh, lingering souls for Dolar. Robin Dolar wants to go to the semifinals. That's a decider down there. Yeah, this is just morbid curiosity at this point. <laughs> just I'm with you. I want to know. Oh, clearing some space for that new batter skull. Okay. And pass the turn back with just that Snapcaster Mage. Now, if Boswell just draws a removal spell here. Kill Snapcaster, attack. End the game. He doesn't seem to have it. Now, there's also the... Uh, Treetop Village that that Batter Skull is protecting How against. How much removal is he going to have in his deck after sideboarding in this matchup? Yeah, very little. Yeah, killing random Snapcaster Mages certainly isn't great. But it doesn't come up very but often. He, but he will have Abrupt Decay. 
which he'll he'll save in there for the blood moons. And, and that, that Dejan got answers with done. lingering souls of his own. Dolar sends so they're into getting the red spiritual zone. down there. Yeah. Block everything. Yeah, double block fulminator mage makes sense. None of this, none of this non-land permanence stuff. No, we're done with that. Oh, they're gone again. They're all yeah, gone. Good. I, they had their orders. Sixty-six plays two. Ooh. Liliana. Liliana of the Veil. Tick down, right? Kill the germ? Yeah, I think you just kill the germ. You don't even need to kill the germ, but I guess you do. I guess it's better than not killing the germ. All right, is Tobias finally out of tricks here? He's got a Snapcaster Mage pulled to the front of his hand. It sounds like a trick. It sounds like the answer to your question is no. Electrolyze? I, yeah, I think he, he peeled the Electrolyze yeah. side there. That way he can kill Liliana. Yes. And draw a card. Wow, if that's is, nice. If this is a repeal. <laughs> no, it's not a repeal. <laughs> is he finally going to crack that thing? No. no, no, no. We're not done yet. The other half of the Lingering Souls, by the way, for, for Dolar. Robin Dolar continuing to be the aggressor. We're manned off the top for Tobias. Main phase Snapcaster for the Serum Visions. Crunch, Robin Dolar. Robin Dolar wins that game three. They played that entire game three since Thrun came into play. Sequence of events, Thrun comes into play, picks up a sword and light and shadow. The two White Rock decks start game three. The two White Rock decks finish game three. And Thrun is still holding a sword and being held off by... Wow. Rich, Rich, which one have you been watching? Oh, it's been a 10 Yeah, we've been watching the yeah. whole game. Yeah. We For have played and watched yeah. every turn of this. A thousand watched, years. What yeah. an incredible game. Yeah, yeah. Just bonkers, right? Yeah. Yes. I, I, we, we've we, been unable to look away. We, we watched the, the game three of Dolar and Dajan in the picture in picture just because we couldn't look away from this. Craziness. So Robin Dolar, congratulations to him. He's through to the semis. And there's a cryptic command off the top. What? How does he? <laughs> do you have any idea how he gets out of this, Rich? How does he actually win this game? Do you have a theory? All I can tell you is that as Toby Ash did the play a couple of minutes ago with Snapcaster, then electrolyzed my own Snapcaster one to you redirect to kill Liliana. Right. He said, yeah, running out of options <laughs> slowly but surely. <laughs> I mean, uh, he's drawing it up. Yeah. Oh, wow, this is just absolutely insane. He gets decked eventually, right? He does eventually. So in, in his sideboard, he's got two Vandal Blasts, also an Engineered Explosives. I don't think he has enough colors, only two maximum for his deck. But Vandal Blast to strip away some of the equipment, perhaps. Did he, did he, uh, did he bounce a Batter Skull with that Cryptic Command? Did he go tap, bounce Batter Skull? Maybe he's got Mana Leak in his hand, which currently... Uh, Never mind. <laughs> Would have countered <laughs> the batter skull. Yeah. Play a land to play for Mana Leak. So he can remand this turn, though. He's at one. He can get a grip full of cards. But Boswell's on 70. He just gets decked eventually, right? Like, I don't know how. Wow, this is just mind boggling. Cool match. I guess if he gets a click to pick up the batter skulls and like somehow keeps up the the whole engine of 
never getting hit by Thrun. That life total, though, for Andrew Boswell <laughs> is becoming a major issue. Well, he's at 70. I mean, because sure like one of the things ish. I could see here is like he's like, I don't know if Mark brings it in, but he's got Karanos God of Storms in his sideboard. <laughs> and that over the course of a long game can deal a lot of damage from all those incidental uh, lightning bolts. But that's not going to get the job done with this. Like if your opponent's at 20, you can. No, maybe I think it's like a click wearing two batter skulls, something okay. like that. Something along those over. lines. Is Tobias at one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're 73 to one. Yeah. <laughs> Just 73 to one happens all the time. Going for the epic comeback. Now, I also see, I don't know if it comes in, but Mark has two Anger of the Gods in his board. <laughs> what if he casts both? Like, does regeneration and prevent it? And catches it without, yeah. If regeneration it, it still so works, right? If you kill it, it's you RFG. It's only if it dies yeah. in an RFGs. Okay, so that's not an answer. I'm looking for anything here, Randy. I'm, I'm digging deep. No, and Thr Thrun's really good at this matchup. Yeah. That's why you have one of your sideboards. Yeah, fantastic. Like, you play Thrun, and then they can't do anything. Well, apparently they can do some things. Apparently they can do many things. <laughs> the open question is whether they can do enough things. Yeah, Snapcaster. None of us believed he was going to win this turn. <laughs> <laughs> sure, no problem, Stabcaster. Cryptic commands, sure, why not? Tap draw. All right, so la, here la. comes Batter Skull. Like that mana leak, which would tap him out and, yep. and make it so that Thrun does not have regeneration mana. There's a window here. A window I, for... I don't know. Like, this is where, like, double anger of the double gods. Double anger of the gods you know, would get him. Like, I... I <laughs> We're, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. He's got, he's got enough lightning bolts yeah, he's to got do it, but Hexproof <laughs> just says no. He's got enough lightning bolts to set the whole feature match area on fire. Yes, he does. However, what he does not have is enough to deal 73. No. It takes a lot of lightning bolts to deal 73. There's a Scalding Tarn that he can't currently use. Nope. I guess playing it's better than discarding it. Somehow, with all this, he's got a grip of cards, too. He's got, what, six cards in his hand? He can also steal the germ token. Boswell can, of course, pick up his batter skull, but Toby Ash can put his own batter skull onto the germ. All right, he's going to steal the germ here. Sure. Oh, and he put the batter skull on Snapcaster. Yeah, he put the batter skull on Snapcaster so that he can get above one. Yeah, he can take a hit now, right? Uh, yes. Six and six. Cannot take a hit if the batter skull moves. Presumably, Boswell moves batter skull. Yes, he still controls the batter skull. He can move it onto the throne. <laughs> yeah, he could. Tobiash could have put the batter skull onto the germ so that it wouldn't die to this play. I guess it doesn't accomplish that much. I mean, yay, you've got a batter skull wearing a germ token, but it wouldn't have attacked, and it's it's a black creature. This is the point in a playtesting session where the team says, "Look, this is never going to come up. Let's just we don't care who yeah. wins this game. We don't figure this this scenario <laughs> out. We've got <laughs> like bigger what? fish to fry. <laughs> let's let's play ten other games <laughs> instead of finishing this one." Right. Yeah. Block, block with the Snapcaster. Just get him another Game nice six. chunk of life. He's up though. to thirteen now. Back up to thirteen. Unfortunately, Boswell's going to jump up here too. <laughs> I'm going to get to seventy-seven ish. <laughs> oh, like man. to first approximation, Boswell's life total didn't move. Mm. <laughs> like the table judge is just like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> He's at a million, and here's Vendillion click off the top for Tobias. Yeah, I keep looking at his deck list, or his library now. Like, this is, I, I'm now confident that he can keep chaining together things to keep <laughs> himself alive. He's proven that, but. He's demonstrated a loop. He has, but what, yeah, what's the end game? It's click wearing batter skull. 
Derek that's Fandoni the end game. Click. click wearing batter skull. He can let Thrun hit him, and then Click can pick up both batter skulls over the course of two turns, right? And now Click is hitting for. What did he just show? He uh, clicked himself for. Yeah, he showed engineered explosives. I think. Really, engineered explosives isn't good. Uh uh. What, what I can guess Thrun regenerates through it. He doesn't want to blow well, up the sword. I think he can only do two colors anyway, right? Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, anything he could kill with engineered explosives, he'd rather steal with the shackles. Right. Wow. <sighs> Click picks up a batter skull. Now, he still loses this row. When Click picks up the other batter skull, then he can race 11 versus 10. <laughs> and get him down over the course of 73, 73 turns. turns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many, how many batter skulls does he have? Because this 11 versus 10 race, I don't think we have 73 turns. Ooh, is that abrupt decay? I believe it is. I think that's the end for the Vendillion click. Ah, oh, finally. Wow. That wasn't actually lethal there, No, right? next but turn it was. Next turn it was. I think, and I think Tobias had figured out, like, his only, his path to victory really was Vendillion click racing. Yes. So that was probably his last Vendillion click. Uh-huh. You know what? We get another game Deep of that. Breath. <laughs> There's a game three incoming wow. for that match. <laughs> that was crazy. That was an insane <laughs> one. He plays Thrun on what turn?